Hello. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is John Bolenball. I'm the whistleblower for the tar sand oil spill by Enbridge in Marshall, Michigan in 2010. And I was a worker. Enbridge actually appointed me to be the yard boss for the largest yard for the largest inland spill in United States history. And then Enbridge had um, an employee of theirs from their own company come down and me as a subcontractor switched over to another company and then I started cleaning up the oil. So I did actually know Enbridge officials. I worked way up there and um, I was appointed in that position. So for Enbridge to sit there and say I'm a nobody and, and I don't know how to clean up oil even though I took all the classes and I'm certified equally to all the other um, guys and supervisors and, and I've been a supervisor in the past. Um, I am a Navy veteran. I have a Bronze Star. Um, I'm trying to build some credibility. I've made mistakes in my past too. And Enbridge, of course, has always tried to discredit me because of my mistakes in my past. Um, but i got to move forward. I saw an oil cover-up. And there, this is why these billion-dollar companies will cover up oil. It's for profits. It's for money. Now, I've been investigating this stuff for a while, and I've learned a lot. Now, when there is a spill, the insurance companies hire the oil companies to come clean up the oil. Now, wait a minute. Shouldn't it be like um, a different company? Somebody that, I mean, you're cleaning up your own mess. You shouldn't get paid to clean up your own mess. That's what's happening. Well, here, there's several things to this. Enbridge knew the pipe was bad for five years. They chose not to fix it. Now, why wouldn't you fix it? Well, let's see. Line 6B makes about $8 million a day approximately. And if you shut it down for a few weeks to fix it, you're going to lose over $100 million in profits. Well, what do you do? You wait till there's a spill, and then the insurance company is going to hire you to clean it up. On top of that, they're going to fix the pipe and they're going to pay for it, and they're going to pay for all your oil that you lost, the lost revenue, and on top of that, this is the big one, every company in America is going to raise their gas prices because they're going to say that they have a shortage of oil now. So listen, they just raised the prices 30 cents nationwide for a spill that happened in Michigan or Wisconsin or New York or Oklahoma they're happening everywhere and I think it's to make money I think it's profitable for these oil companies to have spills I mean Enbridge has had over 800 spills in the last 10 years um, they do not have a good track record tar sand oil is is so much more toxic than normal conventional oil they have to use thinners to push it through the oil. So you have the carbons are already three times more toxic. This is at the beginning stages. Then you put thinners in it. You're putting benzene and octane and hydrogen sulfide and dectane and all these chemicals that thin it out to, to allow it to flow through this pipe with high pressure. Well it's like a sandblaster on the inside of the pipe because there's metals in this, particles. And it's, it's like sandpaper. So the pipes aren't going to last as long. You're going to have more leaks. There's more pressure, so when it spills, it's going to spill out more. And, I mean, you're talking about, in my estimation, about 15 times more toxic than if you were just using conventional oil putting through those pipes. Um, I think that's a pretty good estimate from the levels of benzene and, and the traces after the spill. The benzene was, and we're talking about out in open air, not in closed places, the benzene levels were 2,500 times the legal limit. Enbridge said that there was no benzene at 100 different locations after the spill. They, they lied to everybody. How can, how can you say there's 100 tests and you find no benzene traces? But then the EPA and the health department on the same exact day do test, and it's 2,500 times the legal limit. So then we find out Enbridge lied to us about what kind of oil it was. They didn't evacuate people. Some of them weren't evacuated for over a week or not at all. So they breathed in these high levels of toxic chemicals for a week. Now, this is very important. The MSDS sheet, which says what's in this oil, and they won't tell us the chemicals that thin it out because that's a trade secret. But 
the basic chemicals that are in the oil are so toxic it's mandatory thousand foot evacuation this book right here is what we're trained with and if you look in this book um, this is the 2008 we use this for 2010 it's the same same information for 2012 and if you look in there for like let's say benzene it's going to take you to a page and on that page it says for large spills it's a mandatory 1,000 foot evacuation how do these how do these officials not know this they did know this but the, it's meant to cost a lot of money they don't want to spend all that money to evacuate you this is all about money people so the government said you can't turn this pipe back on until you get a lot of it cleaned up so that's when Ember started realizing we have to start covering it up we can't dig all this out there's too much oil it's it's in massive amounts we just gotta pretend it's not in areas or just put grass over it or dirt over it make it look good we had workers all over the place and I've had I've had foremen back up my story we were told to not clean up areas properly and it, it was all for money they wanted to turn this eight million dollar a day pipeline back on they've already lost a couple months worth of revenue so that's why they were doing it because I mean why would a several billion dollar company do this and that's why and so I had death threats and I have had um, slash tires and my brakes have been caught and I've you know I thought I didn't think I'd be here today that is the truth and I am and God willing I'm gonna be here for a while longer but I've put my health at risk I mean I've been in this oil so many times I've had sores all over my body I've had cuts all over my body from walking in the grass then getting in the oil and then that oil gets into my body I've been sick my lung capacity is half of what it used to be and um, I am sacrificing my health my future my safety um, for the better good um, I feel great about that um, but I, I, I need your help. You have to pass around these videos. I've been uh, collecting footage for about three months now. I am just now starting to edit a lot of these videos. I have a lot of good videos against Enbridge. TransCanada, Exxon, BP. I've been traveling all over. But I've spent all my money I have. I, I don't have any more to spend. Um, I have never accepted donations. I've never been paid to do this. But what I do need now I just put a PayPal account on my website it's helpa.org it's H-E-L-P-P-A that's two P's H-E-L-P-P-A dot org please go there go to my website push that PayPal button put that put five bucks in there please ten bucks anything you can but I'm begging you I can't do this alone I can't do this by myself this video you're about to see I spent about four grand for advertising for t-shirts I've gave away about five thousand dollars in t-shirts already and I purchased ten I still owe the t-shirt guy five thousand dollars and it's Ed's a t-shirt shop um, in Battle Creek Michigan and thank God I I will pay him but um, it's, it just takes time but I want to get the word out if you if someone sees this t-shirt they look in the, and see these videos when you see these videos you know that what I have said is honest I've backed everything up because I'm stating the truth with video proof. That, that's my little logo model thing. And uh, it, it's not easy to do. I, I need funds to keep doing what I'm doing. I just went to Montana to check out the Exxon oil spill. I just went to Nebraska to give speeches about the XL pipeline. And what do you know? TransCanada changed the route of the pipeline after I talked to 100 residents um, in that community. Um, they knew I was coming and all of a sudden they changed it um, so I don't know if it had anything to do with me maybe not but when you get a community that stands together like like Canada the 85 percent of the um, population up there does not want Enbridge to put a pipeline through um, the Great Barrier Reef and some of the different areas up there you're gonna lose all the salmon all the rivers are gonna be contaminated if you have one leak it's gonna happen yeah it, I don't know how you can say it's not going to happen. Um, and as I said, you know their track record. So please watch my video. Um, I'm just going to show you. I gave free hot dogs away and free pop 
and I had a DJ and go karts and bumper rides and I put TVs around so people could watch my videos and people were talking and I just got to keep everybody aware of what's going on because and this is why because the river is still full of oil to this day. Emmerich just said they were leaving. They were done. Well, they're not leaving. I just took reporters out there, National Public Radio, reporters all the way from Canada, and I showed the oil in the river. And these kids are swallowing that oil. And that Enbridge MSDS sheet says that it can cause seizures, convulsions, strokes, um, headaches, migraines, diarrhea, um, liver damage, kidney damage, eyesight, um, hearing. Um, it can cause respiratory arrest, coma. Um, we've had a lot of people that died, and, and more people are coming all the time that are sick. People that, ladies that had miscarriages right after the spill and, and recently. So please watch my videos. Please pass them around. God bless you. Um, and if you, can, if you can spare that five ten dollars um, I, I promise you, it's going in my gas tank um, or for food to expose more oil cover-ups. And, and um, I got something on the back burner that's big. And I can't tell you about it yet, but I, I had a whistleblower contact me um, f from not oil. It's something a lot bigger. And uh, I'm going to get the word out. They're trusting me to get the word out. Um, because they're scared for their life and they're scared to come forward so they're giving me all the documents um, I love you guys I hope you love me back thank you very much for watching these videos um, some of them are quite boring um, but I want a long video that shows the whole truth I don't want a two minute video that's pieced together I want you to know what's going on I want you to see what's going on that's why I use newspapers to prove the dates that I do things um, Thank you very much. You have a you have a wonderful day, wonderful week, and um, I, I hope I'm around for a while. <laughs> oh, I forgot this. Now, the XL pipeline is a pipeline that's going to go down to Port Arthur, um, and then the reason why it goes to Port Arthur and not through Canada is because Canada won't let the pipeline through. But the United States has intimate domain where utility companies or companies that are going to prosper for America can um, take your property and they'll pay you fair market value which is really low or they trick you into a low amount at first um, telling you that we'll just take your property anyways they can't just take your property you have to understand that a jury when you fight this is going to decide how much your property is worth so don't just listen to them and give your property away don't sign off your rights have the company pay for the assessment which they have to pay for not you to find out what your trees were worth in different areas of your property now China has purchased the oil going to tar or through this tar sand pipe down to Port Arthur this is for export the number one export for the United States is oil number one export when they say we don't have oil they're lying to you. We wouldn't export it if we didn't have enough. And, and to be number one, they're fooling you. Everybody is being lied to by these oil companies. And they've been getting away with it. I believed it for years. Um, so China purchased this tar sand oil that's going through this pipe. And we already know when the election's done, Obama's going to renege on saying that he wasn't going to do it. And he's going to put that pipe through. And uh, if he does it, I'll... I'll be surprised and if Romney gets it he's definitely putting it through well this is the issue the problem with putting that pipe through you're only gonna have maybe 400 to 800 jobs from that local state you're gonna have workers like my family that is gonna travel from state to state because they're the supervisors they go to every state and then they hire 50 percent of the total workers from that state that's in the union all right so you're only going to have half of what you think you're going to have. The rest is going to be from other parts of the country that are going to come to your state and, and take your jobs. And so it's minimal amount of jobs. Once this pipe is through, you're going to have maybe 20 permanent jobs. I mean, you only need a few jobs every 
couple hundred miles just to check things out once in a while and that's it so you're not going to have the jobs you're Romney's lying to you a lot of these people politicians are lying to you to say that we need this pipeline people these politicians have purchased stock in tar sand oil do you want to know why tar sand oil is an 80 trillion dollar business did you understand what I just said 80 trillion that's what they believe is up there in Canada there's more money up there I mean you can buy a country with with what it's worth it's very important to to not be misled we don't want this pipeline through there is nothing to benefit the United States for having this pipeline through matter of fact it's gonna hurt us because China's gonna have this oil now and we already know that China's big and they got a lot of people and they're gonna need land someday and they're gonna have a lot of power and if you give them oil for the next five six ten years um, and you supply them all they need um, we're hurting our security so this is a national security issue I've told you several reasons why you don't want that pipe but if you have a leak in that aquifer we just lost 30 percent of the United States water do you understand that right now water costs more to purchase in a bottle than gasoline what are we gonna do when we don't have 30 percent of that water anymore what are we gonna do when Ambridge possibly or TransCanada possibly um, pollutes uh, the Great Lakes what are we going to do if something like that happens? I mean, where are we going to get our water from? Chicago. Guess where their fresh water comes from? Out in the center of Lake Michigan. Guess where all those pollutants went when we had that spill? They say that they didn't go past Morrow Dam. They actually went all the way to Lake Michigan. They were already, the chemicals were already past Morrow Lake, the dam where they said they stopped it, before they even got there. Don't believe them. Don't believe them. I've 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 did a lot of research. I've did a lot of investigating, and if you notice, Enbridge has never filed a defamation of character lawsuit against me. They have so much money that they could file a lawsuit like that. But you know what? I'd win because I'm telling the truth, and I love it. I love it. It feels so good because I can say anything I want. I have no gag order. Um, I took a settlement from SET Environmental um, just for lost wages um, and uh, for them, you know, defamation of character. But this is why um, defamation of character where they said stuff against me that was lies. So this is, this is why I settled with SET. They have testified under oath that Enbridge told them to release me. Now, we have Enbridge on the news saying, oh, nobody from Enbridge would do that. SCT already testified to it, and they're going to testify against you again, Enbridge. I know you're watching these videos. So the company that's working for you right now, they've already signed contracts that they're going to testify against you. And you're going to lose. I've got too much proof. i got too much evidence, and i got hundreds of sick people. And i got lots of people you've conned and tricked and lied to. And they all back me up. And they're starting, even these people, my cousin, he was a worker. And he didn't believe me for a long time. He fell in the water, in the oil, and swallowed some of it. And all of a sudden now he's, he's sick. And he was healthy. He was healthy. Now he's sick. And he was crying to me the other night because he, he you know, he, he believes what's going on now. People just don't believe it. It, it is hard to believe. It's hard to believe that we would get poisoned purposely, knowingly, for money. Thanks for listening to this video. There's a very, this is important stuff I've told you. All right, now it's getting dark. 
and I want to make sure that I have an unedited video of this so I'm at Soresco Dam and this is a lot of the oil that's being collected I'm gonna get a close-up for you well you can see the oil I mean this is a great opportunity even though it's dark it really stands out see how bluish and purplish it is this is all oil sheen and oil that's being collected now your kids are going to be in this river and when they swallow some of this because the kids do that it's going to cause permanent damage because that's what the paperwork says it says it can cause permanent lifelong damage so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my rake in I'm going to put this right here. I'm going to show you the date so you can see it. It is July 8th, 2012. All right, there's a newspaper for proof. 